During February to May 1955, we conducted Operation Teapot at the Nevada test site. And it consisted of 14 tests of nuclear weapons. Of the 14, three of them were very important Department of Defense effects tests. The first of these three tests, the high altitude test, was about a 3.2 kiloton device delivered by a B-36 aircraft to an altitude of 36,620 feet. A very complicated operation in addition to being delivered at a very high altitude. We also had aircraft flying above the burst point delivering rocket trails for better blast definition. We also had a highly instrumented bunch of canisters. These are instrumentation uh, canisters delivered from the same drop aircraft on parachutes to measure the blast and the nuclear radiation. There was, of course, always accompanying these type of bursts, very high-speed photography from the ground. Very important to discover whether there was very much of a change in the partition of energy with altitude, and that's what this shot was all about, to see if the blast and the thermal was changing very much with altitude of burst. Important, of course, for applications to air defense. The second of the Department of Defense nuclear weapons effects test was the S event. This is the effects subsurface event in which we used, again, a 1.2 kiloton device at a depth of 67 feet below the ground surface and produced a very large corresponding crater. A third Department of Defense test on Operation Teapot in the spring of 1955 was the military effects test called MET, which was a 22 kiloton device on top of a 400 foot tower. Radiating out from the foot of the tower were three blast lines. There was a water line, which was 800 feet wide and 3,000 feet long and there was an asphalt line going in another direction of, with about the same dimensions. And the third line was the ordinary desert line. Now these different blast lines were to try to define blast formation over different soil conditions. And of course over the water line you did not expect there to be very much of a perturbation of the blast, say due to the thermal interaction with the ground. You expected the asphalt line to have a lot of thermal effects on the blast, but would not be dust loaded as you would find on the desert line. Now damage was just about that way. We had very small damage on the water line, more and more damage on the asphalt line, and severe damage on the dirt line. Now in addition to these three blast lines, we had three droned aircraft flying above the burst, positioned directly above the burst at zero time. Now these remotely controlled aircraft received, of course, very severe damage to the closest airplane, moderate damage to the middle aircraft, and almost no damage to the third aircraft. Now these aircraft were remotely controlled and brought back and landed at Indian Springs. However, the aircraft that was severely damaged crashed before it landed at Indian Spring, but the other two highly instrumented aircraft were recovered and a great deal of information obtained from them on the effects of nuclear bursts on aircraft in flight.